So I was in the shower the other day, and I was like, what if dogs could speak? In this video, we're going to be using Python, Nextcard, and Pillow. Well, not that pillow, but this pillow, to actually make dogs speak. Well, not actually, but you know, in our world of Dogbot, dogs can speak now. So you can literally type, dog speak, hello, what's up? And look at that, we get an image from Dogbot, and then it's the text that we just typed in. And it can be any text, it can be, um, welcome to this video, right? And it wraps the text on multiple lines as well. So you can have a really long text, and it would still fit inside this speech bubble. So that's really nice. And well, you can do this with any image, it doesn't have to be a dog, of course. But if you want to learn how to do this, then make sure you watch the entire video. And it's going to be really fun, so I hope you enjoy. Before getting into the coding part of this though, we need to do three things. First off, we need to get a picture of a dog, and I'm going to get it from pexels.com and I'm going to download this picture. But you can download whichever picture you want to use. Secondly, we also need a font that we like, so I'm going to get this font from Google Fonts. So you can just go on Google Fonts and choose whichever font you like, and then click on Download Family. This is going to download a zip file. We need to unzip this file, and there's going to be a .ttf file in it, and we just need to move that file into the folder that we are coding in. Lastly, we also need to install a module that we're going to be using in our program, and it's called Pillow. So simply type in pip install pillow in your terminal, and it should install the module. And then I also edited the dog image on Canva to look something like this. So it has a speech bubble in it, so we can add text inside this. And again, you can do this however you want to do it. Cool, so now let's get straight into the coding. So we can start off by importing the modules that we installed. So from PIL, we're going to import image, image font, and image draw. And then we're also going to import text wrap. So PIL or below is the module that we're going to be using for image manipulation. So essentially adding the text that the user types onto the image is something that Pillow can help us with. And the text wrap module, as indicated by its name, just wraps text. And what wrapping text means is essentially putting a large line of text on multiple lines. So if you have a large line of text, text wrap would help us put it in multiple lines. So this way, the text doesn't go outside the speech bubble. So what's going to happen is the user is going to type something like dog speak and then any text like hello world and then our bot is going to send an image with the text in the speech bubble. So it's going to be like the dog is saying hello world. So first off let's create a function or like a command for our speak. So next call automatically stores every word in the form of an argument. But since we don't know how many words the user is going to type in, we also don't know how many arguments we are going to need for our function. And because of that, we can just use the star right before the args variable to essentially read in any number of arguments. And to read this line of text that the user typed in using the args variable, we can just do message equals space dot join args. Basically what we're doing here is joining every argument in the args variable with a space right in between them in the form of a string and then storing that in message. So message in this case would have a value of a string containing this piece of text. Now we just need to load the font for displaying the message. So for loading in the font, we use the file name of the .ttf file that we downloaded, 
and we also pass in the font size that we want to use and in this case it is 50. So we pass those two values into the two tap function and we store that value returned by this function in font. And then we can also load our dog image that we downloaded by simply doing image equals image dot open and then type the file name so dog dot jpeg so we have the message the font and the image loaded and now all we need to do is draw the message on the image so where exactly do we draw the message on the image well when we go to our image we can see um we want our message center to be somewhere around here so we can define the x and y positions of the message center. So for now, I'm going to say cx and cy equals 350 and 170. So this um, x and y coordinate would point to around here. Now to draw an image, we can do draw equals image draw dot draw and then pass in image. And what this allows us to do is use this draw variable to basically just do draw.text and here we pass in some values. So for a first argument we pass in the x and y positions of the text, so cx and cy, and then message, and then the color of the text. So in this case we want the text to be uh, black. So we can just do 0, 0, 0, because that's the RGB for black. And then we do font equals font. So we set the font to the font variable that we defined here. So we have the text drawn to the image. And now all we need to do is save the image and send it on Discord. So to save the image, we can do image.save and then the name of the file we want to save the image to. So in this case, we can do, for example, um, dog-edited.jpg. And now, to open the file and send it on Discord, we can do with open dog-edited.jpg, comma rb as f. And the reason we have this rb is to basically open the file in read mode and binary mode. And then you also need to import a file from Nextcard. And after you do that, you can simply do image equals file f and do await ctx.channel.send file equals image. So with these three lines of code, we open the file and send the image on Discord. Cool, so we have some basic things going on here. Like we haven't done centering and stuff yet, but we can test our code and see what happens. So, and here we can do dog speak hello world. Cool, so we actually got an image from the bot and you can see the text isn't centered. Let's try a different text. So. Hello, who are you doing today? So there's one problem with the text that we do to the image. So first off, the text isn't positioned in a fixed place. Like for example, you'll see that in this image, the text is placed a bit to the right, and in this image, it's placed a bit to the left. So why is the text placed in different positions? Even though we defined a fixed position for the text to be drawn. Well, the reason is, the x and y position that we defined actually refers to the top left corner of the text box. So if you look at the image that we have, the top left corner of the text box always stays fixed, no matter how long the text is. And so we know that the center of the text should be like around here. And that x and y coordinate is the x and y coordinate that we defined in our code. So 350 and 170. So if we are given the coordinate of the center of the text, how do we calculate the coordinate of the top left corner of the text? So let's look at this image. So this is the width of the text 
and this is the height of the text. Right? And we know that this is the center, and we need to find the position of the top left corner. Well, all we need to do is do this x position minus half the width to get the x position of this, and then this y position minus half the height to get the y position. So we know the x and y position of the top left corner of the text. And then we're going to be using that coordinate that we calculate in our program to draw the text. So first off, let's get the width and the height of the text by doing font.getSize and then passing in the message string. And then, as we discussed before, we need to essentially do cx minus the width over 2 and then cy minus the height over 2. So this way, the center of the text will always be at this position. Okay, now let's run our code and see what happens. So dog speak, hello world. Okay, so we see the center is at a different position now. And then if we do hello, how are you doing today? Cool, so we see the text is centered even in this case. Well, we can move the text a bit more down and we can just do 200 for the Y. So if we copy and paste this, cool, we see the text is centered in the Y as well. Now the problem is, what if you type something that's really long? So some text, right, and it's so long that it goes outside the speech bubble. So what do we do in this case? Well, what we can do is we can essentially wrap this text. So what that's going to look like is instead of having all the text here, we have multiple lines of the same text. Or like the text split into multiple lines. So that way everything stays inside the speech bubble. So to split the text into multiple lines, we can actually use the text wrap module that we imported here. So to wrap the text, we can just do lines equals textwrap dot wrap and then pass in the message string and then also pass in a parameter indicating the width. So when we see width equals 20, that basically means the max number of characters for each line is going to be 20. Okay, so let's print the lines variable to see what this looks like. So let's do dog speak, what's up? How are you today? Okay, so we see this is one line and this is another line. And these lines are separated because they're like separate strings in a list of strings. So what we can do is we can iterate to this list of strings and in, for each individual line we can figure out where exactly we want to draw that line. So we'll set a variable called y underscore text to indicate the initial y position of the text. And the initial y position for now let's just say it's cy minus h over 2. And then we can type this instead and we can add this after this line. So we have the height as well. Okay, so now we can do for line in lines, right? So we need to use the line variable in the draw text function. So instead of using the message variable, we use the line variable. And also, when we draw the text, the lines of text to the screen, obviously the lines of text are at different y positions, right? So what we can do is we can increment the y position of the text by the height of the text. And we can get the height of the text inside the for loop. So width and height equals font dot get size line. And we're doing this because sometimes the lines have different heights based on the text they contain. Okay, now let's run our code and see what this looks like. So if we copy and paste this. Ooh, okay, so now we see the lines or like the text 
is on multiple lines. And let's see what happens if we do a longer text. Cool, so four lines. Okay, but we have another problem though. And it is that the text isn't centered based on the entire text. Instead, it's just centered based on the first line of text. You can see the first line is centered, but this entire text is not centered. So what we can do is we can shift the text by some amount. So right now, the center of the text is right here, but the center is supposed to be right there, right? So what we can do is we can subtract the right position by this amount. And this amount is the height of the text divided by 2. So let's calculate that and subtract that amount from the Y position of the text. Okay, so we can make a Y offset variable and set that equal to the height of the text. And what is the height of the text? Well, what we can do is we can multiply the height of the first line of the text by the number of lines of the text to get the total height of the text. So we just need to do length of lines times h. So that's the total height of the text. And then that height divided by 2 is going to be the y offset. And then we subtract the y offset from y text. So that value minus y underscore offset. Okay, so let's run our code and see if our code is working as intended. So let's copy and paste this line and see what happens. Okay, so the text is not completely perfect because um, the text goes a bit outside. Um, we can move a, a bit down. Let's do 230 for CY and run our code again. Ooh, okay, so the text is now in the speech bubble, but obviously we need to test this out with uh, different lines of text. So if we try this, cool, so we have it in different lines and it seems to be centered and it's also inside the speech bubble. Let's, let's do dog speak, um, thank you for watching this video go subscribe. Yeah, do what the dog said. Wait, I have something important to say. Why haven't you subscribed yet? I mean, you've come so far in the video and you haven't subscribed? Look, it's 100% free, you won't miss out on new videos, and you'll help other coders find my channel. Also, make sure you hit the bell icon when you subscribe because then you'll get a notification every time I upload a new video. Okay, yeah, that's it. Bye.